Bazaar is intended for mature, open-minded audiences only. If you are easily offended, we suggest you turn this wacky shit straight off. <laughs> I, had, I had a little what, what you're watching that I thought was fucking awesome. Uh, just a fascinating watch. Netflix put out a documentary. Oh, boop, documentary. Boop, boop, boop. Make uh-huh. the sound good, Ross. Sure. Sorry, I'm like watching the kid and doing this at the same time and it's mm. not working out great right now no, um, doc- documentary jury <laughs> like i said the first time yeah about the uh, american gladiators oh yeah somebody was telling me about oh, this it's that it's like six episodes long and um it's fascinating i mean that show started in 89 and mm. they didn't even wow. have med kits on on set <laughs> for the fucking gladiators <laughs> um can, can uh, you can, let's see if you can name like like three oh, I zap could ice one. tower well, he I, can name them all now. Really? I, I, I can remember turbo i can remember yeah those don't but, i don't think i watched it a lot I'm, i oh, know i know no. what it is though it was kind of like a precursor to American things like american ninja, ninja warrior ninja, yeah. ninja yeah. warrior yeah. that sort of thing you, 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 you had to battle pedestals. your way through yeah. i remember the hitting each other with the padded sticks and the, falling off like tips yeah the joust yeah but they did all sorts well, of crazy other games, and it was really physical. And people were getting seriously hurt. <laughs> um, they weren't getting paid for shit. So, like, I'm just giving the you, like, a, a summary of some of the highlights of this, so it's worth watching. Mm-hmm. There, the amount of steroid use that went on between seasons oh. one and season two scared them because all the gladiators came back, like, 30% larger. And they're like, sure. whoa. Well, <laughs> just you gotta like be, season two. got to come back for season two bigger and better. Totally, right? Because it's all about – it's almost like a wrestling persona. They started to gain fans, yeah. and people were coming out to watch Ice put people down. And, yeah. You know. It's very um, much so in that same vein. <laughs> they panic, and they're like, well, we're going to drug test all y'all. And then the, the gla- – this is like all the gladiators are telling the story, and they're like, oh, fuck. And then they come back, and they tell them, well, we're going to drug test you in six weeks. So uh, <laughs> yeah, just love. so they could say they did it, you know, get clean basically. Right. But so after they did two seasons, it was blowing up. And they were like, we got a great idea. Let's take this shit on the road. And they take these same fucking 12 gladiators out to like 120 cities for every every other night or every night for a show where they literally pull Joe Schmo out of that town's crowd and put him up against these gladiators in these games over and over again. Again, no health care. Yeah. <laughs> like, you know, nothing serious. They're getting paid 500 bucks a night. <laughs> and there's, nice. they're now they're selling like merchandise too of all these fucking guys, and yeah, I remember the toys. toys. I had yeah, the toys. It's, it's nuts, and they were getting nothing. So, like four or five of the most prominent gladiators after the tour was over. I mean, they played Madison Square Garden. I mean, like, that's where they, they filled that shit up. Um, Ooh, I do remember it the, being huge. Yeah, it was a phenomenon. And so they go to the studio head, and they're like, "Listen, all we want is like." maybe a point off the top of the merchandise or something. Just give us something. We're, we're making like next to nothing. And they're like, we need this or we're going to walk. And instead of doing that, they just fired them all. They fired like, all the gladiators. I remember when it was all new gladiators. Three. Yeah. And then they, you know, they went on for seven seasons. Uh, but it's a really interesting watch. I, I highly recommend it. I was enthralled with it. I actually watched it like until one in the morning one night and just got up immediately put it back on to finish it so i, I imagine orgies behind the scenes of american yep, gladiators lots of drug use lots of sex mm-hmm. they show some a lot of camera footage from the tour bus and stuff mm-hmm. it's nuts do you wonder if he was gladiator <laughs> i think he was uh, yeah gold medal set, glad he stupid, ate her <laughs> stupid setup stupid <laughs> delivery but mm-hmm. we're past it now so well, i'll have to check that out it just occurred to me as you were describing it, i was like i don't remember the last time i went to netflix uh i don't know what i've been watching but it's been well i've been streaming stuff but it's the usual thing like i was streaming Mad Men again just you know i i feel like i i just never have time to really get into something <laughs> and when i do it really has to be special otherwise i'm just marathon it's just atmosphere like a comfort thing on the background but uh so that's probably why i haven't been to netflix and uh, watching Mad Men on amazon i think that's how i am i've been watching a lot of uh old ghost hunters because it's like i don't know two yeah, what is love there, that 20, 26 seasons Holy so shit. i mean they're almost to the 30 year run <laughs> Wow. Yeah, you know, and it still might. They still might be doing that. I don't know, but mm-hmm. uh, it's background, you know, for me. I just I don't yeah. mind watching. It, so. Yeah. Well, today is Seven Eleven. Did you guys go get your free Slurpee? No, no. Hmm. Not into it, Chris. 
<laughs> Chris is so offended. Yeah, sorry, I was muted. Uh, I actually fucking did. I took the kid. Oh, you did. Uh, oh, uh, so I, proud. I wouldn't say I regret it. However, uh, I'm actually on my slippery right here. Mm. <laughs> um, but it was a nightmare in there. And oh, I bet. Not only was there a line like, and I told the kids, so I was effing committed. We're, mm -hmm. we're going for Slurpees. Otherwise, it's not going to be a good night for me or him. <laughs> um, so I, so we, we went in there, and there was like a line like 15 people deep. And uh, while we were in there, the little doorbell just kept going off. Sure. Ding dong. Yep. Ding dong. Ding dong. Like for five minutes. Free Slurpee? Free Slurpee? I, Slurpee. <laughs> I want my yeah, Slurpee. And uh, the, the floors were so sticky. Uh, <laughs> it was just... It, it, it was it's unnerving, and I was nice. like, gotta get through to get this slippery for the kid. Gotta get through. <laughs> gotta ruin my fucking night. about that. Minutes. Well, let me ask you this. What's your favorite, uh, what's your go-to slurpy flavor? I don't get them. I think they're too oh. sweet. Yeah, uh, well, I did get one today, because goddamn, if I wasn't going to get after <laughs> sending there. So you don't have a favorite, one. but what'd you get? Uh, I got like an orange one. It was pretty good. Logan got orange, orange. and cherry oh, mix. He always has to mix, too. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Coke was always my favorite. It was kind of the only one I liked. Um, I just love that slushy version of a Coke. Lyle, did you have a favorite Slurpee? No, nah, not really. I yeah, the C Coke one's pretty good. I can't remember whatever. I mean, they they change the flavors so often. I have no idea what they would have anymore. But like oh. anything, the Coke is good. Like I don't know, blue raspberry. I guess I blue raspberry. See, I was just gonna say blue raspberry, but for me that I I get my youth <laughs> <laughs> things crossed. But what Kmart yeah. had. Like Kmart was famous icy. for icy. icy. That's right. Yeah. Was it a, like a, it was a bear? Was it a dog? It was a bear. Oh, oh yeah, a polar bear. bear. In, yeah. That's right. In like a blue hat or a red hat or something. Yeah, I had like a sweater on. I remember those cups being blue and, you know, it was Kmart colors. Yep. I, I, I assume red. that was a, a Kmart. That's the only place I ever saw was Kmart. No, was they like, have them other places too. I've huh. seen them around. But, yeah, I always wanted to get one of those the... 80s. 70s, 80s era icy yeah. machines from Kmart, well, but uh, I love that they. I feel like they had a a Coke one too, or maybe it was Pepsi. <laughs> there was um, blue, blue raspberry is really good. Um, the, that's, that's what the got me going on. That was my favorite one. flavor as a kid, and Have no one knows what it is. <laughs> the banana one, mm -mm. the yellow. It, it I fucking like a... hated banana flavored candy. I still kind of hate banana flavored things. I like, I like bananas. I learned something absolutely fascinating about of the banana flavoring today in a podcast strangely today mm. um that flavor that we taste that like artificial banana flavor mm -hmm. that used to be what bananas fucking tasted like <laughs> and a virus wiped out the bananas and what? they were able to like recreate it this was like 100 years ago or like 80 years ago or something they were able to recreate it and genetically produce new bananas but they can't do it from seed it, it every banana we have today apparently is made from a splice and that means mm that eventually that virus is going to catch it again and eradicate it, and we will not have banana. Like, there's, they say it is inevitable that we will be bananaless in the future. Oh, man, That's it's it. like uh, the the Ape movie. <laughs> no! <laughs> <That's not true. laughs> like so but we are all eating Franken-bananas? Um, I have never yeah. heard that. So, But yeah. I, I'm, I'm a little confused of what, how... What do you mean that the flavor that we associate that we taste apparently, in like banana? How is apparently that? that's the the artificial flavor that we always taste in like runts or whatever banana you're gonna get that's mm -hmm. not real banana. That's yeah. what banana used to really taste like. So, and I don't know why they don't update that because I think it's it's habit or like people expect that flavor now from artificial banana. I'm not sure, but that is that is the I, flavor that probably, bananas used to be. Well, I would you can imagine how people would complain i mean if you go changing the flavor of runts or uh you know a banana daiquiri although I, I feel like banana see there are some banana flavored things that to me taste like banana but banana nah. candy <laughs> never mm -hmm. never tasted like banana <laughs> nope that is interesting uh hmm. franken banana somebody somebody smarter than i if you know about this right into the show I, I probably won't look it up i just i heard it in the podcast it's not a fucking fascinating yeah i have a <laughs> What the fuck's this animal, John Mark, that I'd love to send over? Is this a new... Uh, uh, this one's highly fucking we terrifying. Done this before? Over you say that like that's a weekly... Uh... We have. Remember we did that weird one and he decided it was a caterpillar or whatever on the back of that truck. Okay. That weird one they were poking with the stick. <laughs> he fucking oh, knew. He's yeah. like, oh yeah, that's a blomba. <laughs> so... All right. All right. This, this one fucked me up. 
This one fucked me. I almost did this to you guys last week, or last episode, to a aquatic animal. Although this kind of looks aquatic. What do we got here? Open it up on Twitter. Is notoriously bad with video. Um, yeah, that's true. Sorry about that. Okay, this is underwater then. Oh, it's something attacking a crab? That's some kind of sea <sighs> slug, isn't it? <laughs> I think John Mark is actually 100% accurate again. But yeah. what the fuck? It looks like venom. That's you know? so funny because the video I was going to send was a sea slug too, but a totally different video. It, they fly. They flap that's their real. wings almost oh. like bats. Just no, below I'll the never surface go in the of water the water. Again. I'm never going in. But this is this is way more creepy. Um, you yeah. look what it's like. Describe because what's it looks. It, well, it, you remember the raft episode in? Oh yeah. Creep show. I think it was Creep Show yeah. Part Two, where they're all swimming out in this lake, and there's a. It's not really a raft. It's like one of those floating Float. docks out that Float you swim out to. You sunbathe and you swim back. Well, they're out there, kind of trapped on that floating dock. Because there's this oil slick type creature that's eating them and it dissolves their bones. And it tormented me as a child when I saw mm -hmm. that or a te young teen. Uh, this reminds me of that. The way that it, it looks like an oil slick washing over <laughs> the dude mm -hmm. as so much darkness. Um, yeah, that crab is toast, I imagine. I think so, too. Doesn't look like he's getting out of them shits. It looks yeah. so fucking aggressive too do you see the way it's like it, it also looks like early cgi um, yeah like uh the liquid stuff from the terminator, terminator. what's yeah. the t-1000 or whatever mm -hmm. what uh mm -hmm. creeped me out about the creep show was in rock island there's a trailer park right you know as you're going out i guess towards quincy mm -hmm. and at the very very bottom you know you get to the very bottom of the trailer park there's a little cove and you went out to that cove and then there was a little raft thing that you could swim out to and so, like, it was, it's real. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, if you watched it as a kid and then ventured down there, you'd be like, oh, God, I'm not going to swim to that. Yeah. But yeah. You know what that I'll black thing reminds me of? <laughs> Have you guys ever played the, the video game called Prey? Yeah. I haven't played, that I haven't played it, but I know the one you're talking about. Well, there's a, a couple versions of there's it. There's two versions of it. There's a version of, like, a, like, almost like a Stephen King Indian kind of, like, Native American version of it. Mm hmm. And then Beth Bethesda uh, did a version of it, um, and you're basically out in space, and you have. Yeah, these I think it was um, uh, Ar Ar Arcane Studios who developed it, and Bethesda published it. But it's the same company that did um, the um, shit. What are those two games? It's all that. It's all stealthy. You like that? Uh, uh, not Assassin's Creed, but um, Two of Sex. No, I'm gonna look it up. Tom Clancy. <laughs> this is Continue. the one we have powers. Yeah. You get you get powers, yeah. Uh, oh, oh, Lost Vikings. Dishonor, Dishonored one and two, yeah. yeah. Same yeah. same studio. Okay. Anyway, these little black things they just they 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 morph into objects. Yeah. It does look so like the morphing from, is transpiring. It, it could just morph into a cup, a coffee cup or something like that. Boop, 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 boop. If you're not paying attention, it'll just jump out and attack you. So oh, it's right out of the X Files. That's I true. don't like it. I don't like it either. Um, for further I, reason why you don't go on the sea. Period. Well, the, the the video that I saw that I was going to bring that it was apparently a sea slug, um, it was kind of graceful, but it it was something swimming underwater. It looked exactly like a bat with some sort of elongated tail literally swimming underwater just below the surface. And it was creeping a lot of people out, and I understand that. But I was like, what the fuck is that? But... Because it does literally look like a bat just decided, I'm going to take this species to the next lev. And how else does evolution or adapta adaptation happen <laughs> except one bold motherfucker is just like, you know what? I'm going for it. Mm. Uh, <laughs> it's got to be yo, that yo, yo mixed mo. with eons. Of, yeah, yo mo. Uh, yo mo, swim no mo. <laughs> no, not ready for that. <laughs> Maybe in another thousand years, Randy. Uh yeah, sea slugs. Hmm. <laughs> Who knew? Well, did you guys see that uh, there? I don't know how serious to take this. Not very seriously, but Elon Musk and uh, Zuckerberg are talking about throwing into the ring. Do you think that'll happen? Is this really going to happen, though? No, mm -hmm. they they actually um, backed out of that already. Well, let's say they didn't. Who are you mm -hmm. who are you betting on here? I feel like I know how this is going to go. Zuckerberg all the way. Mm -hmm. You think so? He is more yeah. fit, I bet. 
he's he is so fucking fit. fit. He's been training. For, that's that was what I was getting at. It was like he's so. Look at the picture of Zuckerberg training. Mm-hmm. I think he's, I think he's actually trying to make this happen. <laughs> really, I think Elon God, Musk God. is playing it up on his beloved little Twitter kingdom. Um, which, by the way, I was just listening to a, a podcast that was talking about how, and I guess Elon hasn't really shied away from this, of course, because he's a narcissist, but how uh, it's written into code that anything mentioning Elon goes right to the top of all the feed, even the bad stuff, uh, mm. because it just, it, that, it's, it's the Elon Twitter feed now. Um, but if you look at that picture of, now I haven't seen Elon Musk shirtless, but <laughs> that picture of Zuckerberg, I wouldn't take Zuckerberg in that, in that condition, no, yeah. nor in my condition. <laughs> There's, Let me ask, there, there's some pretty famous pictures of uh, Elon floating around that were taken on a, he was on a yacht, I think, off the coast of Greece or something mm-hmm. a couple of years ago, and he, he did not look, like, super fit, shall we say. Yeah. Big old belt. Yeah. Well, why would you? Let me, ask you <laughs> let, let me ask you guys this question. I, I use Twitter pretty nominally. Like, uh, it's probably my second most used uh, social media platform. Mm-hmm. I personally... I haven't noticed much of a difference since Elon Musk t- t- took over. I mean, like, have you guys noticed? I've oh, heard dude, people. I have. Is it bad? Yeah, like, what have you, what's the difference? Drastic difference. Huh. Um, the difference is um, just, like, who, like, what you're seeing in, in your feeds. Um, Politically, it's I, different. I have, I have seen uh, just, like, a drastic uptick in... Um, accounts that I do not follow or have ever expressed any interest in, like that that lean like right wing, hmm. um, and uh, and conservative, just like right there in my feed. And there's no reason like sometimes you'd see that because somebody that you follow like interacted with it or commented on it or something yeah. like that. Um, but this doesn't seem to have any rhyme or reason other than it's just there now. You know what I mean? It's like I what what the fuck? Why am I seeing this? You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Um. And just like a lot of that shit. I'm like, there was, I would have no interest in like reading this, even like hate reading it. I'm beyond that point. You know, I don't, why, why is this here? Hate reading. <laughs> yeah. And, um, a lot of like, it, I don't know if I can describe it any better than that, but like the con, like the, the content of the feed, like the main feed is just like fucking dog shit now, like even more than it was already. It's, 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 it's bad. So I don't know. It, it may depend on like how you have your shit curated and like your block list. And Apparently your list it and doesn't as much as it once did because well, that's the thing. Elon that's the is thing having is, them write code that overwrites that. And you're going to see yeah, what he wants you to see. Exactly. And, but, I, but like, but yes, I, and to answer your question, Chris, like I have noticed a, a big difference in just like what, what I'm seeing there and it's not good. <laughs> What kind of and, accounts do you, would you say you follow, Chris? More pop culture, movies, uh, keep it up yeah, on video I game lot, shit? I do a lot of news, some celebrities. Yeah. Um, I really like to get on and just see what's trending, honestly, and that takes me down great rabbit holes. There used to be a really fun website. I don't know, or maybe it was an app. I can't find it, but I loved it. It was like real-time trending uh, tweets. It, it, I don't feel like it was on Twitter. It was some other site, and that's probably why it's not available anymore, but you just went to it. And it was just this never-ending stream, like bing, 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 of what people are tweeting in real time. And it was a great way to see what's trending without having to go to Twitter and just, like, scrolling. You would just be like, oh, shit, why are 90 people all of a sudden talking about Vegas, like, today? And there's a shooting or a hostage situation in Vegas today. And it's like, I miss that. It was a, I thought it was a great way to, to really immediately know when something interesting was happening. And not just, like, big news but something cool or something you should check out, like the Northern Lights, for example, which uh, apparently are going to be more visible than uh, in recent times this this next week. I guess Thursday, Wednesday, or Thursday is supposed to be your Huckleberry, but I saw that trending. Uh, Thursday, I think. Yeah. We shall see. I've heard it before, and I've never seen them just around town. You, you do got to go hiking, but people see them around here. Yeah, they, yeah. they catch it, but you got to be willing to stay up. and uh, so You anyway. got to go out to, like, the... I can words that shit out there by past Rock Island. And I think Waterville. Waterville's know, great States. because you can see all the way up to Rain, Mount Rainier. <laughs> there you go. It's crazy mm-hmm. to me that you can see Mount Rainier from here. That is a big ass fucking mountain. Um, well, let's get on to some of uh, the headlines. Were you done there, Chris, or did you have more? Um, all done. 
couple headlines that I found that I thought were intriguing. <clears throat> uh, Aretha F- Franklin's will was recently found in a couch. <laughs> Not terribly recently, but she died, I guess, in, what, 2018. And about a year later, um, a handwritten will <laughs> was found on the couch. And apparently after she died, the family just started going to war over what to do with her estate and fortune, as always happens, because she had left no will. But uh, when they found this handwritten will on the couch, they took it to court to get it authenticated and cleared as a viable will. This was this is all happening in Michigan. And apparently that's one of a few or handful of states that handwritten wills are allowed Uh, I'm going to read this little snippet from New York Times. I thought this was intriguing. After the singer died at age 76, her family believed she had no will. Under Michigan law, her assets would have been divided equally among her four sons. Uh, The sons unanimously selected a cousin as the estate's personal representative, a position uh, to that, a position similar to that of an executor. But... Months later, in May 2019, I couldn't... None of the stories said who found it. I, that would have been my first question. I was like, wait a minute. Who found a handwritten will in the couch a year after she died? But, uh, Isn't that funny? Hey, look what I found. Guess what? I can get <laughs> Like, look, it's, it all goes to me. The two handwritten documents were found at Franklin's home in suburban Detroit. One in a locked cabinet, the other in a spiral notebook in the couch, which immediately divided the singer's children. It also raised questions about how music royalties and other income from the state, as well as cherished items like Franklin's furs or jewelry and musical instruments, would be distributed. So it went to court, and a jury had to decide if it met all these requirements for a handwritten or holographic will, as the law states, which I found intriguing. And they did. They decided it held up, which I thought was really interesting. I mean, it's fucking Aretha. (laughs) I always want to say Aretha. And I'm sorry, lady, <laughs> lady Dane, <laughs> Dane, yeah, whatever I fucking call you, death. you're not the hole in my dick. Um, that, that just gave me a great idea. So like when I pass, before I pass, I'm going to leave a little uh, hologram. <laughs> oh, you of, would leave uh, a treasure. Oh, I'll, be, I'll be with uh, like a little robe like Obi-Wan and do the whole like Leia scene. And uh, mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Which just, just like Fuck spits yeah, out a life. I support this. <laughs> I yeah, do and too. Go on, Mark. He gets my bass and bass amp. Yeah, well, we'll see. We're, <laughs> you assume yeah. that you're going to oh, go the before us. Oh, the drummer gets it. <laughs> Fuck you. Yeah. yeah. I played. I played bass and guitar. <laughs> yeah. I was like, wait, the, the person that hasn't known you since fucking sixth grade gets it. <laughs> okay, you boy. See, you see how this can happen? Here. We're going to need to go to court. <laughs> yeah, that's it. We're going to lawyer. We're going we're to couch this discussion for now. Oh, no, we had too soon. Oh, no. It's yeah. in the couch. I just thought that was fucking fascinating. It, it mm-hmm. baffles me that somebody like Aretha Franklin didn't make a fucking will. Yeah, yeah. it's not. Nice. It's just a massive estate. Um, well, it's, I like a lot of those famous people, too, like just not paying taxes. Hmm. You know, not to, like, you know, pick at a bear, but like. Wesley Snipes a great, you know, example. <laughs> oh, Wes. Great, great actor. You know, he was just in his prime and just didn't pay his taxes. And, you know, it cost him, I'm sure, you know. I wonder what years. that is because we all have to pay taxes. And, it, look, if we're, if we're all being honest, we all will cheat a little here, cheat a little there when we can, you know, especially people who are self-employed. It's too easy to do it. But if you do anything significant... That is so scary, um, the consequences of that. But it baffles me that so many of us who are essentially poor, uh, certainly compared to the rich and famous, have to watch the rich and famous, and especially the mega rich, just constantly dodging taxes. Like, what, what is this about? <laughs> it's like, no. how, how can you... Like, I get that the number that they're dealing with is way more than what we're dealing with, but you have plenty. Yeah, I know it's that never sat well with me. But at the same time, I th- I hate taxes, man. I hate I, I the idea of taxes and the idea of we all chip in for the better good is great, if you think the government is actually being held accountable yeah. with those monies and it's going to what they say they are. And then I don't want to go down a big conspiracy oh. rabbit. This isn't a conspiracy. This is, we all know this. Look around. Yeah, Where is that money true. going, motherfuckers? Why do you, why are you always out of money? <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> to do everything that benefits us, but you all seem to be doing pretty damn well. 
It's a conspiracy with all these roundabouts. These fucking Gotta roundabouts, be. man. Well, they're way cheaper than uh, stoplights that have to be maintained. I got one really? coming in uh, right here on Nile Street, just above my house. Oh, my God. I'm, no. not, I'm not sad about it. I don't hate roundabouts. I hate how people can't fucking figure them out. Uh, they're we not have all over that great, hard. The, that I that think occasional, it'll... Yeah, go ahead. Occasional dickhead. The occasional dumbass. Just that like, stops like it's a four-way stop. You fucking know how to use a roundabout? <laughs> Yeah, you know, I, 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 I had to go through that roundabout by my parents' house out there by Sunny Slope. Oh, that's brand last, new. Last, last weekend. That's and a two-laner. Yeah, and nobody fucking understands. People were just <laughs> treating it as like a yellow light or something where it was just like this. <laughs> I better stop. These people go, going out towards Kashmir just like all kept going. Nobody bothered to stop and yield to anybody else. It was just like, oh, we're going now. And it's just like mm-hmm. fucking. And, oh, my God. Yeah, you and, slow down. If there's no one to your left, you go, and you don't be a douche, and you let someone else next to you go right ahead of you. If everything's moving accordingly, the idea is that no one has to stop. Right. We just merge, but no one wants to fucking merge, especially with these two laners. But a lot of them are just one laners. It's like, if you can't figure out the one laner, and it only takes one damn shit to fuck the entire thing <laughs> up. But I'll tell you why I don't mind it going in right up there, because this fucking highway that it's becoming right in front of my house is getting absurd so this will at least force a little bit of slow down they'll have enough time to get back up to 60 miles an hour even though it's a 40 and there are no turn lanes which is why i almost died almost 10 years ago um but uh we shall see i may i may end up hating it but again it's not the roundabouts the roundabouts fine they've been around for a long time but we fucking dumb ass goddamn redneck hillbilly American fucks just can't can't figure it out. We won't. It's not that we can't. We'll just never. But fuck it. What the fuck's going on now? Fuck this. We we still haven't even before the the roundabouts. A lot of the places where these things are going, there were four way stops. We still haven't mastered the four way stop. It's the uh-huh. simplest fucking concept. <laughs> Pay attention to who was there before you and who came after you. Everyone has to play, though. It's the same thing with the roundabout. Everyone has to play, and there's always one person that ain't waiting for That's nobody. Fine. And one person, usually a sweet old lady, God bless her, <laughs> or sweet old man. Uh, actually, the old men just tend to be the biggest cunts when they're driving. It's like, fuck it, I'm going. I survived. Let's I'm see if you sheriff. can, as Jerry Seinfeld said. <laughs> Got to make it to 7-Eleven for my free slurp. Uh, but you know what I mean? It's like I, I can't think of one four-way stop around town where it's not usually. There's always somebody that just parks there. And then I someone was going to say, like, living can't down fucking figure that out. Well, I've, I've seen so many wrecks right there on 9th and uh, Eastmont. Mm-hmm. That's a crazy-ass well, intersection. Dumb people, man. Dumb people. Well, Especially some, wintertime. Some, wintertime's oh, a, God, that is a disaster in wintertime. Just sit out there in the front window, you know, and drink your, your little uh, hot chocolate. And watch the, <laughs> yeah, you, the, yeah, yeah, you had first a front row show to that, <laughs> or a seat to that show. Uh, well, something I never thought I would see in the news, because it had been teased for a long, long time. Notorious Manson family discipline, or disciple, I should say, Leslie Van Houten was just released from prison today. Whoa, Did you guys see the last this? living one? No. Um, I, I'm pretty sure Tex is still alive. I think... Did Squeaky Fromm die? A couple of them have died. But Leslie Van Houten was always the scariest one to me. I Honestly, I found her more intimidating than Charlie Manson. Um, and like Charlie himself, she was up for parole over and over and over and over again because they were so young when this happened. Um, but she was always shut down. But today... Um, she was freed. Now, she has been in prison since 1971. So her first stop is a halfway house that is specifically designed to rehabilitate people to the long timers back into the modern world. I mean, think about 1970. You can't even think about, well, none of us can think about it except John Mark. Well, you can't even think about it. None of us were born in 71. (laughs) Way to to throw him under the old bus. I was was born in 71. But you weren't thinking about shit back then? I wasn't thinking about shit, no. (laughs) No bottoms, though. Can you imagine? No no bottoms. In our enti- she's been in prison our entire lifetime and then some, uh, with the exception of John Mark. But and now she's 73 <laughs> and is going to have to learn to do life in the modern world. That alone is an interesting thought. 
But she, of course, was part of the La Bianca murders, not the Tate uh, uh, killings. Like, a lot of people get him confused, but she always so the, seemed like the, the creepy one to me, and now she's out, and uh, I didn't think I'd ever see the day. Yeah, from what I from what I understand is uh, there was a record uh, producer that uh, when Charlie was trying to uh, you know he was in a band and he was trying to get his album out yeah uh, was completely shot down from this guy right yeah and uh, he lived in the Tate estate and then what happened was is he moved and uh, just because he decided to go to that address and that's why well, Sharon Tate was you know innocent she yeah. Didn't, yeah, she didn't do anything. Well, well, there's the story. They thought they were going yeah. after that record producer. Imagine being that record producer and thinking, well, whew, I dodged a bullet, but man, some weird shit went down in my old place. <laughs> right. That whole story is just fucking bananas, and I can't believe that they, I really can't believe they let her out. Um, But we shall see. <laughs> I think she'll probably be fine. You know, she claims, as a lot of people claim, a lot of experts claim that she was brainwashed and, I would believe that she was, but there's no question that she put knives into people until they were no longer moving and screaming. And I don't think she should be free. My personal thoughts are I don't think she should be free, but I I do understand this is a unique situation because she was following a cult leader. So maybe that's, obviously, that's the room where they, I mean, how do you get rehabilitated in prison? I don't think we're, I don't think we're a society that really focuses on that, but she's probably old enough to not give a shit about killing anybody anymore. So I'm curious to see what happens, where she goes, what talk shows she pops up on, or if she just disappears into the woods and we never hear from her again, or if someone kills her because (laughs) they uh, are mad that they killed their grandfather or uncles or aunts or whatever the fuck. Or she becomes a TikTok star. She could. I would fucking watch. Mm-hmm. I'd watch you know, her live streaming or podcasting. Possible. Jesus Christ, the things that she she can tell us now. I mean, she's free. Did you guys see this video of that woman on a plane? Yeah. Screaming about how somebody, that, that motherfucker is not real. <laughs> not even real. I, when I Who's saw that, it was just like, oh boy, another dipshit crazy person or someone on drugs or mm-hmm. someone who was drunk, whatever. It's amazing and very concerning to me how many people are commenting on any of the video wherever you see it posted that you know what i believe her look at look she's not lying she saw something Mm. she saw a sideways blinking shape shit and she didn't even specify what she saw so other people are filling in the blank with what they want of course a lot of this QAnon stuff is tied to reptilians or shapeshifters uh so they're weighing in on it and apparently the (laughs) the dude that was uh, the one she was claiming was not real has been identified and he's come forward and he's like, yeah, I'm some weird fucking shit. And he, you know, <laughs> I'm, I'm definitely real. Clearly is very real and not blinking sideways. There's all the, of course, no one's going to believe this, but what the thing that bothers me the most is that as of, I, I checked again, 20 minutes before showtime, as of now, the woman, and this is almost a week old at this point, has not been heard from. <laughs> and I'm that's, like, that's weird. Right? And I'm like, maybe she's just like, please go away. Please go away. Maybe, but it, well, that's probably what it is. My my fear isn't that this is real. My fear is that this is only going to feed <laughs> the otherwise. Red- I do not believe in reptilians, um, what if- but this is only going to help that conspiracy theory shit because all of a sudden she's just nowhere to be found. But Something that did come out a few days after was that witnesses were saying she was drinking a shitload of alcohol in the airport and was acting weird the whole time and then got on the plane and was acting weird to other people. And then she dropped something. She dropped some sort of... I, she dropped something. I don't know if it was a, a vape pen or a, an iPhone or something. Or Oh, I think it was earbuds. She dropped something and... She couldn't find it right away, so she started blaming this guy sitting next to her that he stole it. And then she started losing her shit, and whatever for whatever reason, she uh, decided that he didn't look quite real. Um, so it seems to be pretty cut and dry one way or the other. But it's interesting and very, again, alarming to me how many people were like, yep, she saw something, her third eye is open. Yep, we're here, boys. <laughs> 
<laughs> Eventually, they're all going to see it. Yeah. Very, very <laughs> concerned. Well, the reason why she's quiet is because she's been silenced by the men in black. Been silenced by the, or the lizard people. Or the lizard people. Mm-hmm. Be the easiest thing in the world to make somebody disappear, but I'm really hope, hoping that somebody tracks her down. Um, I mean, it was easy enough to find the guy that was accused of not being real. <laughs> easy enough for him to prove being real. Where's the woman? Uh, my money, my money is that she's probably embarrassed as all hell and seen it, and is like, "Oh my god, you I'm know, drinking." I mean, everyone saw it. You'd fucking yeah. hope. At the same time, you, it, it would be easy enough to come forward and say, "Look, I was drunk." I mixed some medications. All, and I'm not even saying that those are necessarily lies or unfair reasons. <laughs> I've seen what yeah, alcohol do can do to people. Make what it, if you mix it with mix it with some medication? Oh, do yeah. a do a do a press junket and be like exactly. Yeah. So you just exactly said and end it with. By the way, check out my memoir. That motherfucker's not real in stores <laughs> on August 24th. You know? <laughs> and then and then run. They're trying to silence me. Go to commercial. Go to commercial. Yeah, no, she could definitely, uh, she could own it in one way or the mm -hmm. uh, or the other. Um, sorry, the booze is kicking in real hard all of a sudden. <laughs> Good. Uh, interesting. Um, one more thing I wanted to talk about. It's a little long, but we got time. Looks like, do we got a guest joining us around 7-ish, maybe a little after 7-ish? Yep. All right, so that'll that'll be about perfect. I, I Have you guys ever heard of the Sanctum, the Sanctum Sex Club? No, it's, I have it's, heard of this club. It's spelled without vowels. <laughs> it's just, mm -hmm. uh, you know, it's all the other letters. But it's supposedly this exclusive sex club for the rich and famous, often celebrities. Um, but average schmoes can often find their ways into it as well, it, not just by paying for it. But I'd been hearing stories about this for quite a while, and I came across this story recently that had been published by Men's Health. I thought it was intriguing. So I don't mean, of course it is, but I'm going to read a little bit of this. And but first, this is from the actual Sanctum's website. This is not a this is not one of those like fight club type scenarios so much. You're not supposed to talk about what goes on there, but there's no no one's hiding that this exists. And you even know the name of the person who started it. And we'll talk about that in a bit. But this is directly from the website. If you want to join you have to apply. And it says, to attend Sanctum, we mu one must first apply. I like that it's kind of written, not so much this chunk, but a bulk of the website is written, in, writ written Jesus Christ, <laughs> written in like almost old English uh, or overly proper anyway. All submissions yeah. are confidential and reviewed solely by our Dominus Council. Dominus, I suppose, for the purpose of maintaining the highest caliber of guests at our events. If an applicant meets Sanctum's professional, reputational, and aesthetic criteria, the applicant will be granted the status of approved non-member and contacted directly. An RM level membership, $12,000 per annum, <laughs> which I guess is year is required at minimum for any single gentleman to attend a Sanctum event. Uh, girls are free. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> sure. That's the next bit. Sanctum yeah. is always supportive of elegant and intriguing women. They can attend without purchase uh, mm -hmm. if they are accepted to our women's guest list. So, yeah, women get in free, and dudes have to pay between $2,000 for a single event, $12,000 for... Uh, an yeah. annual event, or it's like $75,000 for a lifetime membership. Good Lord. But they do, they don't say this anywhere, but it's, it's made clear in this article and other articles that the women have to be deemed hot. <laughs> <laughs> By who? I don't know, but probably, probably boils down to the dude that started the whole thing. And if they aren't, they can't even buy their way in, uh, according to the men's health expose. Well, yeah. Uh, like and it goes on to say, clear recent photos must be provided. Incomplete or inaccurate applications will not be considered. So I'm not going to read the whole story um, for copyright reasons, but I'm going to get pretty damn close. This is written by Anka Radakovich, Rad Radakovich maybe. Um, you, you imagine you just knock on the door and you say, hey, and they, they open the door and you go, zip, and they go, what? <laughs> you go, uh, are you tall enough to... to do this ride. 
See if you get a discount. <laughs> I'm sure you could. You could talk your way into it. Um, well, this person is a uh, attractive female journalist. This is a quote. This is part of the story. I'm in the inner sanctum of a secret sanctum sex party, and it's a spectacular scene. Per the dress code, the men are wearing tuxedos. The women, who outnumber the men six to one, are nice. wearing La Perla bras, garter belts, and high heels. Everyone is fit and attractive, and everyone is wearing a mask. It's a straight guy's total fantasy, like Cirque du Soleil meets Victoria's Secret Fashion, fashion Show. She says, I got in touch with Sanctum's founder, Damon Lawner, aged 47, a former party promote. Uh, <laughs> I'll get through this, I promise. A former party promoter and real estate agent. Lawner says he was inspired to launch Sanctum, not surprisingly, after watching the Kubrick's, Stanley Kubrick's film. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Maybe I won't get through it. <laughs> <laughs> Lawner said he was inspired to launch Sanctum after watching Kubrick's Eyes Wide Shut. And he says, I quote, I was going through a similar thing myself, struggling with being monogamous with my wife. When his marriage failed, he turned his attention to Sanctum, which has, been, which has since been profiled by Goop, the website founded by Gwyneth Paltrow, who is also rumored to be a Sanctum member. The grand object, the, the founder goes on to say, the grand object of Sanctum is the eroticism of the human race. So, Radakovich, <laughs> which I think I got it right, bugged Lawner about getting to come to one of these parties, and she promised she wouldn't, you know, he knew she was a journalist. She promised she wouldn't disclose any of the locations of the parties, and she wouldn't talk about any uh, of the celebrities, or at least she said she wouldn't mention any of the A-list celebrity names. She'd just write about the broad strokes of how things went down there. Uh, a couple unintended puns there. So she did finally get an invite. Being a hot woman probably couldn't have hurt. But she asked the dude she was dating if he wanted to go with. Naturally, he was stoked. And uh, so they went together for research. Partly to make it fresh and interesting and partly because it was just safer and more private. These parties often move around. They change location constantly. But there is an actual Sanctum mansion. The story goes on to say, The night I attended, it's held at the Sanctum Mansion, a $4.5 million estate located in Holmby Hills next to the Playboy Mansion. When we arrive at midnight, my date and I are greeted at the front door by two topless girls in black ballet tutus and Zorro masks. The club's manager takes our coats. He tells me he's the former manager of the Beverly Hills Hotel Polo Lounge, but within the confines of the sanctum, he's known simply as Mr. Hedonism. Don't you already love everything about this? <laughs> this is some real I want to go so bad. I know. The living room is packed. It's a swanky house party with people chatting at the bar with cocktails or in front of the fireplace. The men are wearing tuxedos and sporting Sanctum's secret society lapel pins. The women, who are all clad in lingerie, are young and incredibly attractive. It looks like a standard Hollywood pretty people party, filled with a handful of TV actors and models, actress, and whatevers. People have inquired about the women who show up to these events and obviously with more hoops to jump through and more money to pay, the group is going to find out more about the men who are showing up. But some people have wondered if these or many of these women at the parties are prostitutes or you know, at least paid actors that are down to fuck, essentially. But uh, Lawner claims none are paid and that many of them are lawyers and doctors with a taste of the kinky side. But there's really no knowing, although this journalist said most of the women she interacted with uh, straight up admitted that they were models and actors or at least aspiring uh, to be one or the other. So, back to it. After my date and I spent a few minutes chatting with partygoers, the erotic entertainment portion of the evening starts, which is provided by what Lawner tells me is Sanctum's official erotic troupe. A naked woman on all fours steadies herself on the floor as she becomes a human drink cart. 
with guests placing bottles of expensive bourbon on a shelf on her butt. A guy in a black cape and black carnival mask starts having sex with a woman in a white Venetian mask while party guests look on, nonchalantly mingling and sipping champagne. Meanwhile, topless women in tutus do pirouettes around the living room. My date and I just watch and take in all the eye candy. A man on the couch pulls down the zipper of his tuxedo pants and receives oral sex from a woman that looks to be at least 25 years younger than him, while two women take turns going down on each other in front of the fireplace. My date turns to me and says, Thanks for inviting me to the pagan Hollywood sex cult. (laughs) I love L.A. Uh, I think I could love L.A. too. My date and I head upstairs where there are two bedrooms filled with a bunch of masked people piling on top of white canopy canopy beds. In the first room, a group of people are watching a woman hanging from, from the side of the bed, receiving oral sex from two other women. People are so friendly in this city. I then proceed to the playroom, quote unquote, a dimly lit attic like space with a whole bunch of white futons on the floor. That's where I recognize my first celebrity in the flesh, a British rock star who I've had a crush on since I was 12. I can't stop gawking at him. It's like watching a celebrity sex tape in real life. As he digitally penetrates a woman's butt, I make accidental eye contact with him. I give him a thumbs up. (laughs) He returns with the hand he isn't using. Who do you guys think that is? Take, Take a quick guess. Doesn't say. A British rock star who I've had a crush on since I was 12. I would say this woman, judging from the I mean, picture, is probably 30, 30 to 40 years old. Oh, I was going to say Billy Idol, but... No, no. His white Idol. wedding days are probably over. <laughs> mm-hmm. Well, I was just curious if you... I don't know. I didn't have any picture of a face, but I'm thinking about someone she's had a crush on since she was 12... That could be somebody from Oasis, <laughs> or it could be somebody from... I don't know how old she is. If she's as old as us, I mean, it could be... And she's a little younger than us. She looks a little younger than us. I would guess in her 30s. Um, but yeah, anyway, I was just curious if you had a... Who who you picture when you heard that. But that's... Um, I mean, picture anybody. Rod Stewart. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Rod. Oh, Rod. Again, I think his... <laughs> His, his we're, we're and people at parties days might be over, but you never know. You might, you never do know. Um, by this time, the farty, the, Jesus Christ, that's the best. <laughs> the fart. That's the best. The farty. By this time, the party is a full fledged orgy. Yeah, you can see how I got to farty there. Uh, a guy in a now disheveled tuxedo dives under his date's designer gown while a woman in a Carolina Herrera gown, who told me earlier she wore it to the Academy Awards, gives her partner a blowjob. In the middle of the futons, we watch some spontaneous wife-swapping go down between two attractive couples in Mardi Gras masks, ball gowns, and tuxedos. The room looks like a cross between an Oscar after-party and an amateur porn set. As my date and I head downstairs and out the door, we pass members of the erotic troupe having sex with each other. My date is elated. I mean, he says, I'm going to have masked orgy vision for two months. Adding, that three-girl threesome was killer. Unfortunately, because of the steep price of membership, it's like unlikely he'll be going back anytime soon. But the erotic entertainment is quite the fun spectacle. If there's one thing I learned from this event, it's that Sanctum members clearly know how to party. So if you have a few thousand to spare to participate in the eroticism of the human race, Sanctum now holds events in New York, Cannes, and Moscow. Moscow, I suppose. Probably not talking about Idaho. Well, there you have it. I'm dying to know. Uh, And I've seen other stories like this about this place. No one mentions the name. They're all sticking to that rule. Mm. But uh, how wild would it be that you find yourself to one of these parties and... You look over and you see, oh, that person <laughs> whose movies I've been watching for 30 years is no. fingering some girl's butt. I got I got invited to a one of these parties, not not Sanctum, but mm-hmm, mm-hmm. something similar in Seattle. 
like just maybe eight months ago. <laughs> I, was say, I don't Ricky, think we talked about this. No, we didn't. He, my buddy Ricky uh, is in an open relationship with his wife and uh, – he always is trying to get me to go to these wacky things. And I'm like, Ricky, I don't know if it's my scene, man. He's like, it's so fun. You'll have a great time. And I was like, I don't know if I want to like fuck in front of people and stuff. That feels pretty yeah. strange to me, buddy. And he goes, oh, you could just watch. It'll be great. I'm like, yeah. I'm like okay. oh, man, I don't know. <laughs> well, I promise you, where, where are these parties? He's going to Seattle for them. Yeah. Well, they, I know they exist in uh, Wenatchee. You're not going to run into Johnny Depp or some somebody from Oasis there, but... Debbie they John, exist. on the other hand. Mm. <laughs> but that guy you know from Leonard Evans, yeah, he might be there. <laughs> That's a local uh, used car dealership for any out-of-towners. Uh, anywho, uh, yeah, fascinating story, fascinating life, and um, it, it's just a matter of time before someone gets some really good hidden camera footage from one of those places. But Anywho, well, that puts us right about... Uh, at seven, should we take a quick break and get our guest on and move on to some weird trip? That's great, buddy. All right, right back. <laughs> Do I don't recognize the icon? Oh, perfect. Are you there? Uh, oh, no, oh, I no. know the name, <laughs> I know the voice. <laughs> I'll let you introduce uh, them. Up, dick bags. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody, <laughs> welcome back to the show because she has been on in one. Uh, capacity or another many many times the one and only holly yeah hey. hey. don't you have some i mean don't don't you guys do a podcast together we used to kind of... yeah we used to Ron broke some... up with me it got harder oh, and harder to do two podcasts we barely do yeah. one yeah, um, that's true but it was fun it was a good time to we i think we i think we might have started it before now we we must have started during the pandemic yeah, a, we did. It was a good time. Oh, there you go. Now something sounds a lot better. That's better? Yeah, much yeah. better. She remembered her training. You can still find a lot of it. up. <laughs> I don't remember if I put them on YouTube, but they're all on Facebook. They're all on the Comet Facebook page. You can look up the Holly they're on Ron like, show. Uh, but they're, Spotify and stuff. Yeah, they're on the yeah. podcast apps. We did seven or eight. Not, mm-hmm. I don't think we, we quite hit. I don't think we quite hit ten episodes. I love that you call it the season. Shit. Mm-hmm. I do call it a season, Chris. I love it. Yeah. I love it. Well, it's a brilliant You're way still... to do it. You you bust out a whole bunch. You take a few weeks off. I'm like, welcome to season two. <laughs> it's something we should have done a long time ago and just, you know, compartmentalized and saved up. But oh well. no reason to stop now. At this, yeah, John Mark came to town uh, over Fourth of July weekend. We got to hang out and have some beers. We were talking about that. It's like ah. it's so mind blowing that so many people still listen to us and they just accept that this is what it is. It is when it is and it is what it is. Uh, and we are fortunate yeah. that there are still hundreds of people fucking listening between and three and 400 every people. week. And I, as I was telling John Mark, I said all the fucking time, put that many people in one room. And that is a weekly fucking party, man. Uh, any old who I have no idea how many people were watching or listening to the Holly and Ron show, but uh, we definitely had people miss us when we went away. By the way, before, I'm I seeing something before uh, we hit the theme song here. I am seeing mm. something on my phone that reminds me. Did you guys know <laughs> that if you have an iPhone that is at least, I think, seven or eight, um, that little shiny Apple logo on the back is a programmable button? Mm, I don't think it's a button. I think it is a... It's a I mean, unless you know something that I fucking don't know. It's I know a, you can tap I, twice on the back I of the do. phone. <laughs> well, it's uh, a programmable double double or triple tap. Uh, it's not a button. It's the it's the thing inside the phone feeling the vibrations. It's not the fucking Apple symbols, not a goddamn button, you old ass man. <laughs> this is exactly, I'm so glad you responded. This, <laughs> this is how I responded to it. And then I pulled my phone out. And I'm like, holy shit, it's a fucking programmable button. Uh, no, no, it's not. It is. It's it's called back <laughs> tap. It's in your general settings. You can do this right now. Now I always have uh, a hard shell case on my phone, and unlike some of them that have the, I suppose I used to think it was a braggadocious thing. The hard shell cases that left the whole circle open around the Apple logo, but now I see that it's utilitarian. It's actually a usable button. Now the only. The guy that showed this to me at uh, the market when I was sitting down there working, mm-hmm. he had it set up to to be the flashlight. And 
I, I gotta be honest, that's the only practical use I could think of. Um, mm. That's what I set mine up to. Double tap, and then the flashlight's on. You don't have to go uh, into the menu, and it's just right there. But, again, I got a shell on my case. So, are you seeing okay. it, Chris? So, general, and then what settings? Where is it at? Um, I think it's at accessibility, and okay, then you'll accessibility. see back tap. <clears throat> mm-hmm. I really thought you guys would have known. Did you know about this, John Mark? No, I don't think I did. No. Why the fuck would this be such a secret? Thing? <laughs> it's been. Well, I've done the back tap like a, like a triple tap for things and whatnot. Well, why but, would uh... why would you not consider that a programmable button? Because it's not a physical moving button. It's literally the phone feeling for vibrations. Like th- that Apple symbol is not a button. It's not a pressable button. <laughs> I see what you're saying. Is that true? Let me take my phone. John Mark, you worked on phones. The Was there ever a button built into the back of an iPhone? No. Nope. Yeah. However, that being said, <laughs> yes, um, it does have. I mean, I mean, I don't know specifically if that <laughs> that logo, the logo thing specifically has any sort of um, touch capability these, these days. Any sort of uh, capacitive capability because you can. Uh, around that generation, I think, is when you started to be able to do like the capacitive um, charging where you just lay it on the little pad, right? Um, and so I don't know if that has something to do with it or, or not, where it's maybe just like it's just detecting like how the screen detects your finger, right? Well, my mine is only responding when I touch the Apple. Well, here's the thing. If, if you were only, if you were able to just turn your fucking anything you program like the flashlight on by tapping the back anywhere on the back that would be annoying because you'd be constantly turning on shit so it Mm -hmm. makes sense that it would be i just googled it what is back tap and what options are there this is from apple um double tap or, or triple tap the apple icon um another article from pocket says this feature that turns the apple logo on the back of your iPhone into a secret button called back tap. Uh, Chris does sound like a button elitist. <laughs> well, but I also, I'm glad I'm glad I'm but I finally. also, it also kind of makes sense what he's saying. Like I, I do understand. Tap, tap near the Apple logo. I bet it still works. It probably. Yeah. Cause it's not a fucking button. <laughs> it's, 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 it's feeling for the motion back there in that general area. <clears throat> well, that still <clears throat> seems like, it's still something I never fucking heard. You at least <laughs> knew that if you tapped the back of your phone, it did something. I didn't know that. Um, I had it on for a long time to do something. I wasn't to turn my flashlight on. It was for something else. And I found myself is accidentally what a lot of people... hitting it all the time. <laughs> for some reason, like it might, whatever, me bumping into whatever would turn it on and whatnot. It looks like the default, um, according to Apple, is it takes a screenshot. <laughs> That's what it That's was. That's how you yeah. get a screenshot. I don't see it anywhere in my shit. I'll have to dig around in here, but I'm not, not seeing anything about that. And maybe Gen- that I have the, it's because I have the SE. Maybe that doesn't do it. Maybe I have to have like the actual numbered model or something. I don't know. Um, yeah, it's not an accessibility for me either. I can't remember where it is now. It's yeah, an accessibility it, for me under touch. Oh, maybe oh, I have to touch then. Touch, yeah. Sensitive touch, reachable. Haptic touch. No, fuck. Holly, do you find that it uh, bottom. it works uh, when you touch outside the apple as well? I bet this is like compelling podcasting. I, no. I yeah, promise you, to people. Four old men try and understand some, iPhones some people, is some well, really look, good shit. It, you four you guys five. didn't know about it. Chris kind of knew about it. Anyway, <clears throat> so okay, maybe it's not exactly <laughs> the uh, the Apple logo, but it's uh, it's in that region. Yeah, it's anything uh, in the in dead center of the back of the phone will do it. But it's the clit. It's the clit of the iPhone. You're going to have better <laughs> success if you hit right on it. But uh, if okay. you get anywhere yeah. near it and you know That's what you're doing. That's why it doing. took you so many years to find it. Mm-hmm. Holly. He's the expert now, though. <laughs> I thought we agreed not to talk about our personal <laughs> doings on the, here on the program. <laughs> you know, people already think that we are, were married or are married. I don't you're tell not? them you're not. <laughs> yeah. Oh, well, that might <laughs> help the rumor. Mm-hmm. All right. Should we move on to some weird triv? I can't remember the last time Holly played this with us. Have you been on weird triv? I feel like you have. Yes. Um, I have since moved houses twice, acquired a second cat, a second dog, and a master's degree. Okay, so we had you on about nine months ago, yeah? <laughs> Not much has happened. You're saying. Mm-hmm. A really boring life where nothing happens. We got it. 
<laughs> All right. Well, let's get this candle lit with a little. Oh, I've got to turn yeah. these shits up. Here we go. Well, now well, back to being too late. Fuck. Holy another animal. Okay. Let's see uh, who reigns. I love how you used supreme. to actually go in and put that song in and post, and now you just let your little speaker <laughs> plug it from your phone. Like I put enough shit. <laughs> <laughs> I spent enough time. It's funnier this way. <laughs> yeah, people okay. have heard. <laughs> I spent I spent time on the production. They got it. Um, yeah. Okay, so uh, before we start, have we are we one away from a championship round? I was, I was just gonna say that okay, we have sorry. the lovely TJ Aislin and an open spot uh, that we need to fill. An open hole we need to fill. Mm. Holly usually yeah. is game for being the for, open hole that's for filling mm, holes desperate need of being filled uh -huh. mm -hmm. so how do you so mm -hmm. if you win tonight holly you go head to head to head to head to head to head um <laughs> with all of us you don't really play tip against us but you'd be playing that would be a that would be a great fucking championship round holly wow. against aislin against wow. tj mm -hmm. i'm, I'm kind of rooting for you holly Sell tickets to that shit. Feel free to look up these Take answers. Give me some action. <laughs> I'm going yeah. to disappoint you all terribly, but <laughs> that's good. Really yeah, that's I like to hear. My job. Okay. Let's get right down to it, guys. Question one: The Barbie movie comes out this weekend, and it's getting some good reviews. Here's a little trivia on the Barbie movie that I thought was fascinating. One of the following statements about the Barbie movie is true. The rest I made up. Is it A? It's the first movie where the gender pay gap is non-existent on every single paid position. Mm. Is it B? Initially, uh, they were set to cast Danny DeVito as Ken. <laughs> Come on. What am I supposed to do with that? If God loved us, he would have cast Danny DeVito as Ken. So... Have you read much about this movie, Ronster? No. Uh, only, only that for what it is and what it's called and what it's about it does seem to be garnering a lot of like it seems like something i want to see it is I not never... what you think it is like at first look yeah uh, i think there's some social commentary going on but i don't know anyways. yeah that, that's uh, what i got yeah <clears throat> is it uh, um, excuse, excuse me the, uh, the then devito has can is it c so much pink paint was used that it caused a global shortage of it or is it D? Its first script featured a crossover with G.I. Joe, but was changed. <laughs> Again. Well, there's always room for a sequel. Four things here. One of them's true. Uh, first movie where the gender pay gap is non-existent on every single paid position. It was initially set to cast Danny DeVito as Ken. Uh, during production, so much pink paint was used, it caused a global shortage of it. Or its first script featured a crossover with G.I. Joe, but was changed. Ronster. There's something really familiar about the paint shortage, but you just did a question. And I feel like that might you it was some sort of McDonald's mm -hmm. shortage. That but might be you, sticking you in must, my craw. But, what but, what yeah. was it? Was it pick not pickles? Oh no, it was some it was sesame seeds. That it was, was McDonald's who, that they see, were the okay. largest producer of, uh, that it was causing a world. Wasn't it caused the no, is that there was no shortage? Sticking? Sticking in my hand? I think that's what's sticking in my hand. Um, <laughs> Danny DeVito. <laughs> I get that this could possibly be some sort of uh, statement, as Chris was saying. It sounds like they might be making some social commentaries. Um, but what was A? Uh, gender pay gap. The pay, pay gap. gap. Are we? That was what I was trying. Th this would be an amazing film for that to happen on. But I think that might be too poetic. Yeah, uh, there's no way. And there, I, I, I thought, are we not doing that yet? Are we still not doing this? Are we still not paying people? I thought, I thought oh, we the gender were pay working gap on still very much fixing there. this. We're still not paying people fairly in this country. What's the holdup? <laughs> what is the fucking holdup? Like, who's Corporate explaining greed. this to people? Patriarchy. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah, men. Men are explaining it. No! Doesn't exist. Um, I'm sorry. D? What was D? Uh, its first script featured a crossover with G.I. Joe. 
<laughs> trying to think of. I'm going with D. Companies. You're not up yet. You calm down. Oh, well, you get to listen to everyone. That's interesting. And There's an order. Decide. Yes. Oh, yeah. I, thought you, I thought you've listened to this program Shout before. My apologies. Mm. <laughs> D, I like, but I can't remember if it's a. Ha I thought that Barbie was Mattel and GI Joe was Hasbro. I'm gonna go with. That doesn't mean they couldn't have merged at this point. I'm gonna stick with the paint, paint. shortage. You know, um, paint shortage. Everything's this, owned by like all. six corporations now, Ron. But, but am I right though? Wasn't Barbie Mattel and GI Joe was Hasbro? I think you're correct. Mm -hmm. yeah. I think you're right. GI Joe was there. GI <laughs> <G>. Joe. <laughs> Hilarious. All right. John Mark. Well, I don't know. D's probably correct, but um, I'm going to go with A oh, just because I have I want to have hope for the the present and the future. Mm, I like it, John Mark. Lyle. Well, hello. I am thinking this happened to a movie that was produced a long time ago. Uh, it's, uh, you might want to help me out with a little bit with it. It was like a... There's this lion. There's a lion. <laughs> and there was a, a they ran out of yellow back. paint. Yes, and they ran out of yellow paint for the roads. So, yeah, I'm going to say a paint shortage. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting. Okay. I'll never get over you not fucking remembering. What was the name of that fucking wizard movie with the Oz and the rainbow and shit? You know, I, road I, and stuff. I forgot to bring it up, but I had to go back because I meant to make this joke. I had to go back and look at how many people downloaded that episode. It was like 450. There are 450 people screaming <laughs> at their iPhone or headphones. It's like, fucking Wizard of Oz, you, you just said it. Hopefully at the same time. <laughs> they probably scream that shit at me every time I'm playing. Weird Excellent. What are you going to do? Anyway, right, I guess Holly, we know where Holly's going. Yeah, I the paint feels true. Um, the pay gap feels deeply untrue. Okay. But I want to believe that they were like, how can we cram as much, how can we cash in on as much nostalgia as possible? Mm -hmm. And so I think I'm going to go with D. Okay. Going with G.I. Joe, too. Okay. Yeah, well, this is the era of crossovers. I mean, more so than you could get away with in the past. But, And uh, I think John Mark was the one that said it, that uh, every every so many things are owned by, like, one entity at this point. Yeah, sure feels that way. Okay, question two. Let's talk about Japanese vending machines for a minute. Now, we've covered some of the wacky things you can get in Japanese vending machines in the past, including booze and even used women's panties. <laughs> But a new string of vending machines have popped up in Japan selling this. And by all accounts, it's very popular. What are they selling in uh, vending machines now in Japan? Is it A, bear meat? <laughs> okay, kid, that quiet. Does, that doesn't seem... <laughs> no, not the bears. <laughs> that doesn't seem all that exotic for Japan. Yeah, maybe not. Uh, is it B? Beer flavored Kit Kats. Oh, they do get jiggy with their fucking Kit Kats. Mm hmm. I've, I've got a pack from them. That was great. Sorry you brought one back. Uh, is it C? Synthetic caviar. Okay. Yeah, we're synthesizing it, things now. Or is it D? Condoms designed to fit over your entire body that also come in 16 delicious flavors. <laughs> Bless you. Sorry. Uh, so, I'm Again, sorry. Condom wanna... that. Fits over your uh, entire body. body. Full body condoms. <laughs> like the fucking naked gun. Mm -hmm. Love scene. Full body condoms that come in 16 delicious flavors. Again, a string of vending oh machines have God. popped up in Japan selling this, and by all accounts, they're very popular. Is it A, bear meat, B, beer flavored Kit Kats, C, synthetic caviar, or D, condoms designed to fit over your entire body that also come in 16 delicious flavors? Ronster. <laughs> Why would you need a body sized condom to be flavored? Are you gonna lick the whole thing, or just I guess yeah. wherever you find, you ever you, well, yeah, okay. I'm drunk. Why am I so drunk? I only had one IPA and two whiskeys, and no dinner or lunch or breakfast. Um, the Kit Kat thing is hard to escape, but I feel like the condom thing is either such a Christopher answer or the thing that got <laughs> your attention you. for the story. <laughs> I think I'm just going to chase the Chris Herring here. 
I'm going to go with the full body, multi flavored condom, even though it doesn't make any goddamn sense other than cosplay <laughs> for what, what a tribute to sense? Naked Gun. <laughs> okay, John Mark. I'm curious. I'm going to go Mark with the synthetic here. caviar because it just seems so random. Mm -hmm. Okay. Have you guys had Smile. any synthetic meat? Uh, I've had like a like a Beyond Burger and stuff, you know. I oh, like that, it. That's like soy, though, right? I think so. Yeah. Or what, I don't, I'm not sure. What are, are they selling? Synthetic burgers on the market? It's it's or is it veggie still kind burgers? Of... To the, it's not like a you know lab grown yeah, yeah. meat yet. No, I, I know, think. but I think, yeah. But we are growing meat. Is like that, that not on the market yet? Maybe that's not on the market. I don't. I don't think it's widely available yet. I hadn't mm -hmm. seen it for this. Okay. I'm I, interested though. To bring on like the meat trees, man. Let's do it, right? If you can give me a burger that tastes like a burger and a cow doesn't yeah. have to die for it, I will fucking eat it. Think about it. Like twenty years it's... after you've all eaten it. <laughs> I read <laughs> because this we get clever book with this man made time. shit and it's always worse. Like margarine yeah. or artificial sweeteners, it's always worse. So they I'm like not talked hopeful. about how Sorry. they can make these meat trees It'd just be sacks of meat that are genetically engineered so they don't really have a brain so they don't in theory really have a soul <laughs> or anything like yeah. that if you if you're religious in that fucking aspect weird. they're just fucking meat lungs and a few organs <laughs> and all they do is plump up for harvest <laughs> yeah <laughs> well speaking of meat G, what no does the, the crippler have to say about this problem. question here could you imagine going through your fucking garden oh well, yeah there's a bear lung and we got some Nice little rump rounds of <laughs> I'm roast. Pick me here. a roast. That would be Fuck, fucking yeah. incredible. Uh, but I don't know a lot about that. I heard. I didn't know about this. I I was last year. I went hunting for deer, bear, and cougar. And um, apparently, like if you're not careful with bear as mm -hmm. your you know quartering out in the field to you know take back to your truck or whatever, mm -hmm. um, you they they carry this weird fucking virus. That'll, uh, if you touch raw parts of the inside of the bear and like wipe your face or get it in close to your mouth or your nose or whatever, uh, it'll, it'll infest you mm -hmm. and get you all screwed up. I mean, like worms that'll devour into your brain, basically kill you. Yeah. If you don't, oh, isn't if that, you don't cook it, if isn't you don't that cook trichinella? it properly, I think it's it, trichinella. It's, it's similar to that. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's definitely bear meat. What, whatever. To, well, I'm you just have to treat forward. properly, otherwise it could be bad news. Yeah, yeah. bad news. <laughs> Literally bad news bears. Get it? <laughs> Are you, going, <laughs> you going bear, Lyle? I am not going bear. Ooh. I am Ooh. going... Zag. Barely what zagged. Was... Now he's going to zag. Well, you know, the problem was you waited too long. Now I need to hear the answers over again. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I waited too long. I'm sorry, your long-winded response took yeah, you too it's long. It's not to wrong through. taking 20 <laughs> minutes to go through each one of them. Come on, Chris. Okay. Get a little right, snap it up here. Apologies. Okay. I'm so sorry. Let, me, get, let me give you that, <laughs> your majesty. <laughs> um, yeah. it, was, it was bear meat, beer uh -huh. flavored Kit Kats, synthetic caviar. Oh, well, I know what it is. It's for condoms. Okay. All right. Because, you do you, I, I don't know about you guys, but I got like a probably a little armed assortment of like beer or like bar uh, condoms. You know, you're in the bar and you fucking you go to the bathroom and they get like the little condom. Oh, I'm still thinking bear. <laughs> you made the of bar. We, we get the novelties, you know, little cock rings, you know, for, you know, I don't know, a buck fifty or something like that. Yeah, it's a joke, you know. It's just, but like I, I would get fucked up and I would like, I might get laid tonight. You never know. And you well. think, and then they just accumulate, you know, accumulate inside my desk when I get home. I just. Yeah, you know, well, that didn't work out well. <laughs> <laughs> the condom of shame box. You got, yeah. you know, we all have the very, very wrinkled collection of condoms. Like, yeah, that night didn't go the way I planned. <laughs> some, some condoms been on fucking deep sea fucking fishing, and <laughs> <laughs> but they're oh, cheap. Yeah. Always pack one. Just always Holy pack one. You never know where the night's gonna take you. Yeah, so, but like a bodysuit that's edible. I mean, you know, there's. And then, and then you're yeah, he didn't say edible. I didn't. He I said, said taste, flavored. He said tasteable. Yeah. Well, licky licky. You know, <laughs> it's still fun. It's a good time. All right. Okay. And you're still being protective. You're not being <laughs> risky. You're being protective. Yeah, yeah, fucking way people are putting on laugh. full body condoms. Oh, oh, man. Yeah, I can see that. Was, <laughs> you know how miserable that. that would be. <laughs> mm -hmm. It's a kink thing, man. The cosplay. What did I even go with? 
Uh, you went with uh, what did you go with? You went with condoms as well, Ron. You okay, full body I was just thinking, why am I shooting down uh, the? Why does that answer seem so odd? <laughs> like, oh, yeah, this is so stupid. Who this would has go to with be that? this has to be a, well, it would be a novelty, and Japan is filled with those. So, all right, Holly, okay, what are you Holly. feeling? That was a roller coaster. Mm. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, listening to you all process that. Enjoy and I am imagining Lyle just like eat, chewing his way out of one in the morning. <laughs> like a fucked I up breathe. caterpillar. I'm buried alive. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> like the kind of does feel <laughs> distinctly Chris. Yeah, it does, doesn't it? <laughs> He's yeah. going to his pupa stage. Mm -hmm. uh, How's your bed doing, by the way? Does it miss me? My bed? Wow, this conversation I, goes all sorts of places. <laughs> crashed into we all have interest in it. did ask Holly you to story. use a full body condom when you stayed in it. I expect yeah. you did that. Mm -hmm. uh, yes. <laughs> Wait, two of them. <laughs> Which flavor? <laughs> yeah. I didn't self sample. Banana. Fashion fruit. <laughs> Fashion but it's fruit old banana, sure. not not uh, modern banana. Yeah, it was the old banana flavor. <laughs> <laughs> the old banana flavor. Banana classic. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah. Classic banana. We did like new okay. banana. Okay. So are you going with the uh, the condom too, Holly? Or, uh, no, the, I am not. The Kit Kat feels too boring for Japan. Fair, fair the enough. The condom yeah. feels like too bold. Too right. stupid. Ooh, the Goldilocks of the choices here. Where do we go? Um, I want to know where they're getting the bears. I don't think there's a ton of bears in Japan, so I think I'm going to go with synthetic caviar because that's weird as shit. Well, there's there's tons I love of bears it. in Japan. Yeah, love bears. Okay. Oh, the bears. Some of them no oh, come. This food. is great. Let me tell you, it's a close yeah, ask. Karate. <clears throat> Question three. Despite being the modern symbol of love, the ancient Greeks did not regard the heart as the center of our emotions. Instead, they attributed our emotions and intelligence to this body part. Wiener. <laughs> Don't get ahead of yourself, <laughs> Crippler. Uh, again, modern symbol of love uh, attributed uh, our emotions and intelligence to this body part. The wiener. Is it A? The liver. Oh, God help me. Is it, yeah, no shit. <laughs> Is it B? The anus. Ooh. Oh. <laughs> Is it C? The tongue. And? <laughs> or is it D? The genitals. Genitals. Yeah. Ancient Greeks attributed this body part to our intelligence and our emotions. Ronster. Liver, anus, tongue, or genitals. Damn. <laughs> My new favorite rock, paper, scissors game. <laughs> oh, this is... Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Shoot. <laughs> tongue beats anus every time. <laughs> <laughs> uh, depends on how much chocolate play you have. It might go the other way. <laughs> no, no, that's not Anus beats tongue. I've seen anus beats tongue. tongue a couple times. Yeah. <laughs> tongue caves. <laughs> tongue is up. <laughs> <laughs> um, damn. Oh, you didn't say a, a gassy anus. No, I am so I tempted to go with <laughs> either the anus or penis herring. <laughs> well, genitals. Genitals. Uh, gen uh, mm -hmm. Gender. Uh, gender yeah. nuge. But there's something about the tongue that I like to think maybe they thought, well, that's how you talk. That's how you communicate. Maybe that's where the actual, I mean, that's what is moving the, you that's know, what's wait, moving wait, when you're actually on. being saying smart things. Um, uh -huh. I'm gonna go with tongue, even though I may okay. have missed a golden opportunity to go with a butthole, which is rarely one of your answers. Oddly, mm -hmm. yeah, strangely. Okay, John Mark. Uh, I'm going with liver. Ooh, he's been awfully quiet during this chat too. Did you notice sure. that? He knows something. Blocked, but he's <laughs> quiet. <laughs> <laughs> Lyle. Oh, man. Oh, man. Uh, I, hey, oh, man. That anus thing. <laughs> well, you know. You know about those those Romans, you know. Mm -hmm. Well, these are those Greeks, but sure. Oh, Greeks. Sure. Greeks, for sorry. Well, Greek style is often thought to be uh, anal sex, right? Mm -hmm. Wasn't that the Greeks that supposedly were super into butt, butt doings? But but stuff that might be a, a myth. Uh huh. I don't know. I wasn't there. Come look it up. <laughs> I'm, <laughs> I'm going with the genitalia. Okay. The more you Holly, know. 
The more you know. Where are you after? Where are you at? Will, where are you after that <laughs> roller coaster? Make me sound good, Ron. <laughs> Write that in post. Um, Will know. Liver. Hell no. Interesting. Interesting That's a... shit. Okay. <clears throat> Greek sex is, according to uh, several things that are popping up in my Google search, simply put, a fancier name for anal sex. In the bar. Don't know if that's based on history or something that was just uh, colloquialized, likely in the 70s, but there you have it. I didn't make it up. <clears throat> okay, guys, uh, as I often like to do, I'm going to close things up with a question about a famous musician. Oh, God. In 1996, <laughs> after buying pot from an undercover cop posing as a student at his high school, this man is arrested and charged with drug possession. He's given a year's probation and labeled a youthful offender, which later keeps him from getting drafted. After seeing a Rolling Stones concert, his life has changed, especially when friends tell him that he could become the next Mick Jagger. Hey, this what? man would later change his name and start a band we all know and love. Who are we talking about? What year? Uh, nineteen sixty-six is when he got busted for pot. Okay, that's all I. And so several years later, I would say. Is it A, David Bowie? Mm -hmm. Is it B, Gene Simmons? Hmm. Okay. Is it C, Sting? Got it. Or, <laughs> is it D? <laughs> Eddie, hey, money. money. <laughs> <laughs> well, again, who did the who uh, saw the Rolling Stones and it changed their life? David Bowie, Gene Simmons, Sting, or Eddie Money? Well, I'll be honest. David Bowie was the first thing to pop up to my mind, but I know he was arrested for buying pot, and that was at a pivotal moment in his life. But that could be said of just oh, about. This is a rare one. I had an E. I'm so sorry. Anybody? <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> I apologize. Before you answer that, I had an E. So Eddie Money's technically E. D is Steven Tyler. Okay. Steven Tyler. Um, well, okay. um, again, David Boy, Gene Simmons, Sting, Steven Tyler, or Eddie Money? Gene Simmons often proudly proclaims that he's never been high or drunk. So I can't imagine it would be him. Um... Steven Tyler, on the other hand, has taken everything that was ever handed to him. Um, <laughs> I'm going to stick with Bowie. I, I mean, I know that Bowie was arrested for, but you said band. I mean, David Bowie did start a band, but we don't know him for starting a band. Could you repeat the question one more time before I answer? Oh, it's so long. <laughs> okay. Do it. Uh, in 1966, after oh. buying pot from an undercover cop poison as a student at his high school, this man was arrested and charged with drug possession. He's given a year's probation and labeled a youthful offender, which later keeps him from getting drafted. After seeing a Rolling Stones concert, his life has changed, especially when friends tell him that he be could become the next Mick Jagger. He would change his name and start a band. Who are we talking about? Okay. Hey, I'm going to go with David Bowie. I really yeah. did botch that question in my head. I think I botched it reading it. <laughs> John Mark. I'm going with Steven Tyler. Yeah. That's, that was my okay. second guess once it popped up. Blaine Staley. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> Come on now. Well, no, you got to think that it was in the 60s. He was in high school, so he was like, what? Well, if, uh, Lane I mean, would have been in the high, sc high school. Ten years in the from us? In the 60s John, in high school? No, they would have been... He, he's in his 70s so now. 18, he, would, he would have been, you know, 16, 17, 18 in high school in the late 60s. So, yeah, starting a band in the 70s. So, yeah. That, that fits the bill. Who are you going with? Of that man with the beautiful daughter. He used to be an elf in a movie called Lord of the Rings. <laughs> he used to be an elf. God rest her soul. <laughs> Uh, oh, she was in uh, Mallrats, too. Ooh, uh, Steven Tyler. She wasn't in Mallrats. Wasn't she? No, no she was in... in uh, was she in any um, Kevin Smith? Empire Records. Yeah, Empire I, don't, Rec I don't think she was in any Kevin Smith movie. Yeah. No. Empire. Oh, she was in uh, She was in um, Jersey Girl. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, okay. I forget about no. that. But yeah, yeah because of... Steven Tyler. Okay. Finally. <laughs> what she's up to these days? Don't say much. 
Words cannot express how ill qualified I am to answer this question. Your own words will. Uh, <laughs> yeah, your words. I'm just trying to think of like how unfortunate is it that you change your name and you change it to Steven Tyler? Oh, there's a fascinating <laughs> That's an interesting dumb name to Well, Gene Simmons changed his name. David episode. Bowie changed his name. And I believe Eddie Money changed his name. Eddie of... Money is also a dumbass name. I don't know like, if Steven Tyler. I, I think it's a fucking sick name, personally. Yeah. <laughs> I believe you. Eddie there's Money is awesome, a great name. There's an awesome episode of uh, Hoarder or American uh, Pickers. Or American Hoarder Story? No, 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 no. <laughs> American, American Pickers. They go out and story. They, they actually find. Aerosmith's very first tour van, and it's got the so one of their buddies, uh, you know, drew all over it, made this like wicked looking, um, I want to say wizard on it, and they take it and they restore it to its its former glory, and they give it to Aerosmith at the end of the episode. It's hmm. pretty awesome, well, but they talk a lot of shit awesome. about the whole band how it started. Uh, living in that van for you know years until mm -hmm. they finally made it big. Yeah. Fascinating, fascinating, mm -hmm. fascinating stuff. Fascinating. Ollie, did you guess yet? Uh, I'm gonna go with Gene Simmons. Mm, Interesting. Good. I love it. Before we do the roundup, um, one of my buddies that I was in a band with for years back in the '90s, his uncle was a touring roadie and a touring musician for many, many years, and they were always traveling all over the place. And they were at some rest stop or some place where uh, some equipment had fallen off of, like, a flatbed or something. It was, like, on the side of the road. It was a bunch of crates, and they picked it up, and they opened it up, and there were, like, all these harmonicas and guitar cables and picks and stuff, just random shit. Nothing too extraordinary. But inside, not the outside, but inside the trunk was spray painted the uh, Aerosmith logo. This was in the '80s, so they don't know what they got, but it's like <laughs> it's likely that uh, you know flatbeds were more of a thing back in the day. Something fell off when they were pulling out of a rest stop. They might have had some uh, Steven Tyler used harmonicas in there, which I played on a couple shows back in the day. <laughs> of course, I like to entertain that it was authentic, but you never know. So they Let's go with the lied. answers here. And <laughs> see where this winding road takes us. Mm, uh, question winding. one, the Barbie, the Barbie movie is coming out this weekend and it's getting some interesting reviews. Here's a little trivia. Uh, during the production of Barbie, they used so much pink paint, it caused, caused a global shortage of it. Oh, okay. Um, maybe I did see that story. Maybe you did. Ron and Lyle got that correct for a point of pop, I believe. Let me know if I fuck up any of these. Just that say, hey. That is crazy. That's crazy that in this day and age that they would even paint. Like, they would use that you know, much practical paint. And not do you know what my it? logic was? What? I was like, you can just mix red and white. Like, how can you even run out of it? <laughs> That's true. That's one more step. <laughs> well, I mean, yeah. there's, you know, after effects, too. You could just, like, basically Photoshop everything. Yeah. It, does, it feels like a dumb problem to have. It is. Yeah. It, does, it is. Uh, question two, Japanese vending machines are pretty weird and wacky. You can get a variety of things in them, apparently. Uh, but now, you can go up to a vending machine in Japan and get yourself some fresh bear meat. And it is locally sourced, Holly. Where mm -hmm. the fuck are they getting the bears, Christopher? Yeah, they bear. have, there are bears uh, in Japan. Uh, why are they, uh, you know, about, I don't know. I don't fucking know, but they're locally sourced is what they said. So uh, hunters, Farm local to table hunters, bear. <laughs> yeah. I know That's there's... my new fucking day nap. <laughs> There's an a actual oh, Japanese bear, Japanese brown or Japanese black bear. No, no, but no. They, I think they have you, a regular. What are we can look it up. Go you ahead, go man. walking down the street, this old rickety street, and you, and it comes down to the dead end cul de sac, and there's all these uh, like fences with barbed wire on them, and you see all these little uh, gummy bears, and they all sit there looking at the at you, you know, behind the the fence. That's where they found the bears. Well, according to my Google search, there are actually only two species of bear. In Gummy Japan, bears. but uh, the Asiatic, Asiatic black bear, um, and the Izo brown bear. Yeah. Cool. Ron, what did you Asiatic go with? Black bears are so little. You went with. Uh, uh, I think I went with the condom, one. like a fucking yeah. dipshit. Yeah, you did. John Mark and <laughs> Holly went for the synthetic caviar. Nobody got that correct. Question three: The ancient Greeks did not regard the heart as the center of our emotions, but instead the liver. Ayo. How did you guys know that? 
The rest are just glorified holes. Okay. Hey, man. Suppose, liver yeah. scares me. I don't like it, dude. The thought of a <laughs> liver failing. Cause the liver. I know what kidney, kidney failure is. I, I know what that is. <laughs> but like, like, liver failure is like, it turns your liver into like a sponge. Mm-hmm. And it doesn't work. <laughs> and it, it, it's it posted. A horrible to the thought to think about a liver fucking failing. Yeah. Uh, John Mark and Holly got that correct, which Listen. I believe makes it a tie game between John Mark, Lyle, and Ron, and Holly has one point on top of y'all. She's sitting at two, you're sitting at one. I wonder if it was because it was more centrally located and it was bigger. I think they just didn't understand it. It's just hanging out in there with the rest of your guts. They're like, what the fuck does this do? <laughs> it clearly is. Wait, no, I, I should only have one point at this point, right? Because I, uh, yeah, you are tied with one point with the rest of the guys, and Holly has two. How did I get oh, two? Okay. Uh, you got the liver right, and you got question one right, I believe. No, I guessed D no, for didn't question get, one. Yeah, didn't get the point. Let me one. track the point here. Uh, Whoops. Okay. Four way tie so far. Huh? I thought Four-way it was a pity tie. point to you know reduce the wage gap or something. <laughs> that's, that's what it was. <laughs> Keep things, uh, yeah. Fair, quote unquote <laughs> okay. fair. Question four. See how this turns out here. Uh, after buying pot from an undercover cop in 1966, posing uh, as a student in his school, Steven Tyler, who was named something else that I didn't write down, uh, went to jail, missed the draft, saw the fucking Rolling Stones, and his friend said, you could be the next Mick Jagger, and that's exactly what he tried to do. That's and probably to well, some degree did. <laughs> so, uh, John Mark and Lyle got that correct. Which Steven means Tyler's we have a... real name. I gotta look that up real quick. I gotta know what Steven he changed. Steven Victor Tallarico. What he changed to Steven... Steven Tallarico. Victor T- Tallarico? Okay, well, Steven Tyler. I get why he changed it. Yeah. yeah. But Tyler. Now Google Steven Tyler's toes. <laughs> get, a re- get a real treat. No no joke. Give Steven a quick Google. Tyler's toes. Is this gonna scar me? Whoa. Yeah. Right? You're welcome, and I'm sorry at the same time. Um, was he uh, wearing the tiniest shoes, the baby? I don't understand what happened either, but it oh, ain't good. Oh, no. It's yeah. Not... I'm worried about him. No, they're, piggy... <laughs> they're piggybacking each other. <laughs> this little piggy yeah. is riding the other piggy. <laughs> Raw dog in life. <laughs> it looks like his second... <laughs> his second toe is trying to snap off of the Please. big toe. <laughs> Please consider, for your consideration, Stephen Tyler's toes for the cover for the, of this uh, for the graphic. episode. <laughs> Done. <laughs> Jesus <laughs> Christ! That that could be it. That could have been its own separate trivia question. Whose toes are these? <laughs> Hint: He could not. snap a about, mean beat to it. About eight years ago, I brought these toes up to you before and sent to say, "Did told you to do the same exact thing?" So <laughs> this is a very podcast. It's a uh, condition called Dream Morton's off. neuroma. <laughs> I gotta go back and look at footage. <laughs> no pun intended. Of Steven Tyler singing with the camera pans down. I bet he's doing that with his toe the whole time, because he can. Mm. He's got a snapper toe right there. That is Pretty strange. What is happening, Stevie baby? <laughs> okay, guys. Uh, Lyle, John Mark, tiebreaker time. <laughs> I need you to uh, open up a separate message to me. Singular message. Write to me. Direct message. Okay. D- slide into my DMs, Lyle. Holly, you can it. play along, too. I'm going to, but it doesn't Oh, count. yeah, please. Does she have your number, uh, I believe the limit for alcohol in your blood when you're driving is 0.08 percent in washington state Mm -hmm. what Mm -hmm. is the highest blood alcohol concentration ever recorded Mm. by somebody that was still alive a hundred percent (laughs) gas i thought you were gonna go with a hundred percent i was like (laughs) there's too much blood in my alcohol stream only lemmy (laughs) Okay, um, I have everyone except Holly. Holly, did you want to send Chris a guess? I just... tried to message you. Did I fail? You can just say oh, it if since everyone Discord, else is. I'm not, I'm not smart enough to know how to read that. Oh. If okay, everyone else is, then you can say it. Yeah, yeah. We've, I received them all. You can just verbally if you want. Oh, to. it was a full guess. I said 4.1. 4.1. Oh, that okay. sounds fatal. Bless you, kiddo. Ronster went with 2.8. John Mark went with 3. Lyle went with 2.6. The correct answer was 0.91% is the highest one ever what? reported. Really? A little bit under that. Huh. What? 
which I believe makes Lyle our winner today. Congratulations. Thank what? you. Thank you. Because po .08, so that's 11 times the legal drunk limit. Oh, okay. I'm so bad with math. I don't believe you. It's so point Give so point one would be way, way, way higher <laughs> than point zero eight. This uh, says one point four eight was the highest. Well, I don't know where your sources are coming from, Holly. What did Chris say? Fake news. <laughs> Mine came right from the internet, okay? <laughs> yeah. Can't argue with that, Holly. Either way. Are you reading it right uh, though? Lyle, De so decimal point is key here. <laughs> 0.91 is what I read. Highest uh, no. blood point. At 9.1? <laughs> measured. You're getting no respect right now, Chris. I'm so sorry. Clearly. We all just immediately yeah. called you a liar. <laughs> no, I believe 1. it. 1.48 right. is still... Uh, well, maybe mine, maybe I have some outdated information, but it's still lower than what John Mark said. I don't know how to Google. So <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how iPhones work. How to, I don't know oh, how to Google. Christ, I was going to say how to Google. <laughs> Highest... <laughs> Blood alcohol rate recorded. Go with that. 1.4. See, that's what she came up with, too. Now, see, I, I'm seeing stories about a Kentucky man's blood that was 0.708. Well, that was made news. 0.54. Well, either way, I was. we were all way off. What did Holly guess? 4.1. Okay. Well, <laughs> yeah. well, well, it yeah. doesn't. The bottom line is we were way we were all it way too sounds like a scale issue. In 2004, 0.914% was the highest uh, as of two, 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 uh, as of 2004. So maybe it's something has uh, popped up since then. Okay. But, yeah. That's like 78 years ago. So <laughs> point zero eight. Literally. Congratulations, you lost. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for coming on. <laughs> Loser, see, get out. See, point, <laughs> point zero eight is so far away from like that's. Oh, yeah, someone smarter than me man. figured this out math wise. Like what? What is? A non-decimal. What's a fraction of point zero eight? It's like it's like one. if you were to have eight cents, this gets you drunk. Eight, and this eight guy cents had out of a dollar. a dollar, and this guy had a buck fifty. Yeah. Mm, yeah. Okay. That's extraordinary. Mm -hmm. I was thinking point eighty, and I think I always think point eighty uh, when I think yeah. of blood alcohol, not point <laughs> zero like eight. The law, Ron. <laughs> like yeah. a lot of your choices. <laughs> I was like, look, I'm fucking <laughs> <Yeah>. sober. <laughs> I blew okay. into this thing. This fucking I got twenty percent to go. Ooh, high score! <laughs> boop, 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 boop. Right. Looks like I'm DD ding, ding, after ding, all. Ding, ding. <laughs> I'm just gonna well, try to you. ring that. I'm just trying to ring that bell. Ding ding In ding. In all seriousness, Holly, thank you so much for coming on, and I hope you'll come back on and earn your way back into the championship next time. I'm gonna put you back into circulation, okay? Wait, who won? I need it because yes. I am Lyle. ashamed. Oh, Lyle, nice. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Thank All right, you. guys. <laughs> Have fun. Make good choices. Wash right. your hands. You know we won't. Uh, <laughs> All right. Where your bottom, bottom, wear your bottom condom suits. Wear your bottom bottom condom. When in doubt, follow you your should liver. have a bottom condom. I don't know how to Google. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so many uh, stingers to choose from tonight. This mm -hmm. was a doozy. A little time. Yeah. All right. Bye, y'all. Good night, Bye, everybody. Guys. Have a good night. See y'all next week. We will be talking about 9 11. Night, everyone. Bye. Bye. Oh, get that game. Balls of Torment. Ooh. Balls of Torment. On it. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <He's good. laughs> it's only four bucks. Come on. Oh. Hey. Balls of Torment. Like four this. dollars. Right, give me one second. Doo -doo. Balls oh. of Torment. Nice. Yeah. Imagine you just knock on the door and you say, hey, and 
they open the door and they go, zip, and they go, what? <laughs> he go, uh, are you tall enough to to do this ride? <laughs>